folks, I'm Ian Baker, and today we're going to go over the 2020 Keystone Passport 2950BH. This is an awesome floor plan. As you can see, you have the super slide with both a U-shaped dinette and a sofa. And with this particular floor plan, the sofa is directly across from the TV. You also have double over double rear corner bunks and full access to the bedroom, refrigerator, and bathroom when the slide is closed. Let's start off here on the kitchen. You will see the countertops. I think they have a nice color palette going on here. It's kind of like a faux solid surface, both in aesthetic as well as design, because this is what they call like a thermofoil countertop, which is a step up from T-Mold, because you don't have to worry about anything popping off here. And it also allows you to undermount the sink for a much cleaner look. You can see that there, big stainless steel bowl. The cover is also a uh, cutting board. So I always recommend just using one side. That way you have a side that looks nice when the guests come over. High rise pull out faucet. Having that pull out is nice. Makes it a lot easier to wash and rinse dishes. Very modern uh, look to that faucet as well. Over to the side here, you'll see the three burner cooktop that is recessed with a glass cover there. So that way you can utilize that as prep space. Of course, this just folds up and back like so. That front uh, burner there is high output. You have a couple more in the back and then the oven right down below. Underneath the sink here, I do love this. I think they nailed it. I love when manufacturers do this. It's exactly where I want my trash can underneath the sink and you have a dedicated spot for it. Over to the side here, a couple of drawers for your flatware, everything else you need, definitely a necessity in the kitchen. Uh, as we come around to the front, you will see this additional storage here. In my opinion, this is a great spot for pots and pans. So, uh, and again, something you know you have to have in a kitchen. You'll also see a courtesy light right down below. It's in a great spot. That way you can turn that on if uh, you're leaving for the night. That way you know it's just a small little light when you come back. Maybe the kids are sleeping and you know it's just one of you here or something like that. Also right up on the ceiling here, you'll see they have a motion sensor light kind of along the same vein. So that way, if you head out for the night, you come back in, you have that in the motion sensor setting. When you walk in, the light turns on. That way you don't have to leave a light on. Uh, main control panel is tucked away right up there on the side. Basically everything you need. And then across the top, you have additional storage. So you have your uh, kind of frosted glass look here at the brush nickel pulls, microwave and hood over to the side. Now, the only thing I don't really like about this kitchen setup is that you're kind of forced to use your appliances as your prep space, right? The, most of your countertop space is right over here, which makes it tough to use as prep. So you either kind of have to have your sink top cover on or you have to have your glass cover down. So uh, it kind of takes away some of the usability of the kitchen, in my opinion. You can definitely make it work, but I just wish you know it would have been a little bit bigger so I'd have some prep space here. As far as electrical outlets, you do have one located there, which is pretty nice. So that way, um, you know, you can have a couple different things plugged in because you will also have one, there it is, right up top here. So you have a couple different electrical outlets to work with. Over to this side, you will see the fridge freezer combo. Plenty of uh, space in there. This one does run off both propane and electric with automatic switchover. They have the, kind of like the stainless looking panels on here, which, you know, I guess it, it kind of, it kind of works, right? Because it has black, but you have all black appliances. You know, I think I wish they would have had like a little more stainless or something on the cooktop just to kind of help pull it together. But it, it still definitely works. Above the entertainment center, I'll open that up for you so you can take a look. It's actually pretty decent storage in there. Nothing too heavy because this is just a panel. Um, so if you put something heavy, you know, a bunch of heavy stuff up there, it'll probably break. But uh, it is still a decent storage area for maybe like extra bedding, you know, uh, blankets, things like that or lighter comforters, pillows, things that aren't too terribly heavy. Underneath is the TV, and the thing I like about this is it's directly across from the sofa. This is super convenient. This is where I want it. I don't have to crane my neck to watch it. You have a multimedia center right down below that is Bluetooth capable. You can see a HDMI port on there as well for auxiliary equipment. And then if you have anything else you need to plug in, you can see you have your electrical outlet and everything right down there. Plenty of space, again, for that auxiliary equipment. Over to this side pantry space open that up it's always great to have a pantry in your uh in your rv again you know you can have a lot of dry food this gives you the space for it and then in the back corner is your bathroom so right here foot flush lever toilet you know this is a passport they try to be a little bit lighter weight so it is a plastic bowl again for me that's one of those things i would probably switch out i prefer porcelain despite the little extra weight but that's uh you know a little more personal preference 
In the corner is your sink top and vanity, electrical outlet, mirrored medicine cabinet. I do like that it's an actual wood medicine cabinet, not a plastic one. Vent fan right up top, LED lights, that secondary entrance I mentioned. This, of course, is what gives you access to the bathroom as well as the refrigerator when that slide is closed up. And then you have a tub shower, which in a bunk model, I like having a tub just because it gives you uh, the ability to give the kids a bath if they're a little bit smaller. And I'm six foot tall. You can kind of see as far as space, thanks to the barreled ceiling in here. Even when I'm at the lowest point, I can still stand all the way upright. With that skylight, you can probably be 6'2", six, 6'3", six, still be able to shower in here, which is really nice. And then as we make our way back out, over in the corner are the double over double bunks. So uh, a couple cool things here. One is the fact that they are double over double, 300 pound weight capacity. So if you need adults to sleep in here, I'll kind of show you the space you're looking at. So as an adult, you know, again, I'm six foot tall. My head's not touching. You know, my feet are just about there. But as a six foot adult, I can sleep here no problem. Now, you know, I probably wouldn't be able to have anyone next to me because I'm over 200 pounds. And unless it's a child, uh, we're going to exceed the weight limit. But um, you will see that right in the corner, you have USB ports as well as the electrical outlets there. Same thing on the bottom. So if you need to plug in like um, you know, a tablet or something like that, you have the capability to do so. If the kids are back here, they, you know, they again want to plug in that tablet or cell phone on a rainy day, kind of gives them their own space. You'll also see the door. This access door is awesome for storage. I really like when manufacturers do this. I think they nailed it here because what you can do as you see, you can lift this right up like so. I would take the cushion out and throw it up top. It just makes it a lot easier. But look at all this extra storage space you get for travel. It allows you, especially with that door size, you know, if you can probably fit some of the kids' bikes in there because it is a very large door, much bigger than we see on most. Uh, also, you know, grills, firewood, totes, big heavy things. Now, what I think they missed in this floor plan, what I don't like when you're talking about the bunk area, is I don't have a lot of storage for kids' clothes, right? Once you get to your destination, that space underneath the bed is really all you have. I don't have a space to hang up any clothes, so you're gonna kind of have to live out of duffel bags and put a laundry basket underneath there for your dirty clothes. Right here, you will see the ladder. This, of course, allows the kiddos to eat quickly and easily, climb up into the top bunk. And then, as I mentioned, that super slide. This is a trifold sofa. The thing I like about a trifold is not only is it comfortable to sit on, it's also fairly comfortable to sleep on. It, as far as RV standards go, right? Um, it's a lot more comfortable than your traditional pull-out mattress. You don't have that bar on your back. It's not like an air mattress. It's going to deflate on you in the middle of the night. And as long as a couple adults are okay snuggling, you can sleep two adults there as well. So if you have adult guests, they can sleep there. Plus, because this has a U-shaped dinette, you can sleep two adults here as well. So that's pretty great. That's a big advantage of a U-shaped dinette. Um, it doesn't necessarily allow you to sit more people at it. As you can see, you can kind of have one on each end and then two people right back here just because of the knee space. So realistically, you're still only fitting four people at this table, especially because the table is much smaller in a U-shaped dinette than a standard dinette. So fitting four plates oftentimes is even a struggle. But the great thing about a U-dinette, as I mentioned, is it does sleep more people. It's bigger when you drop it down into a bed. You'll also see in lieu of storage in this slide out, they went for bigger windows, larger windows. It's something that we're seeing in a lot more manufacturers this year, trying to let more light into the RVs. It is on a dimmer switch as well. I would demonstrate it, but it messes with the camera. Uh, but if you push and hold, the lights in the slide out will dim. And you know, basically until they go all the way down, if you continue to hold it, they'll lighten back up or you can just touch it to turn it on and off. Right here, so this is, um, you know, as far as the storage space, technically you could use this for the kids' clothes, right? The, the only thing is, I wish this would have been in the back rather than in the front. Um, you know, I'm not sure why they positioned the slide the way they did. I, I'm sure there's a reasoning why it's not in the back there, but that's where I would have liked to have it. Uh, maybe it's, you know, because the way the TV lines up with the uh, couch, probably it'd be way off center otherwise. So you can use this for the kids' clothes, or if you want, you can use it for your clothes. Either way, it is a great storage area. You have the hanging rod in there. The shelves are removable. This is something that I do like. I think they nailed it here. When you talk about the bedroom, you have this big opening. A lot of times, it's not what you get. You'll have the entertainment center here, and you may have a small opening to the side, or if it is in the middle, you know it's a much smaller opening. This definitely lets you get in and out nice and easily. And as you can see, even with my big butt, because it's such a large opening, I can get around to the side of the bed quite easily as well. 
One of the great things about Passport, folks, is they use 60 by 80 residential queen size mattress. So you have a nice big uh, residential queen in there, so that way your feet aren't going to hang off. The doors themselves, if you take a look at the doors, let me kind of unclip this so I can show you. So you kind of you have a, a nice style door there, rather than just being plain wood. You know, it kind of has the uh, multicolor inset panels, which I like. You have your storage right there for your uh, your wardrobe, for your clothes. A little bit of storage up top, cool extra shelf. Storage there, of course, pretty common stuff here. Uh, you have the accent wall, which looks pretty nice. And one of the other things I like is actually on the side. What you'll notice with Passport is they have uh, an actual nightstand. A lot of manufacturers just put a panel there. But if you put any weight on it, like if you go to try to use it to get in and out of bed, your hand will just go right through it. It'll push right down. That's definitely not the case here. I mean, again, you know, I'm over 200 pounds. You can see I can sit on this. No issues there. And so I do like that. They have that on both sides of the bed. And of course, as you would expect, there's storage here under the bed as well. That is strut supported, so it's very easy to use. And lastly, on both sides, you have electrical outlets as well as USB ports. Now that we've seen the inside, let's take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Keystone Passport 2950BH. Up front, this one does come with a power tongue jack, making it a lot easier to hook up and disconnect from your tow vehicle. You'll also see a light on there, as well as manual override in the rare event that it does fail. Behind that are two 20-pound propane tanks with the cover, rails for your battery, and you'll also see right down there in the frame is solar prep. So if you want solar, simply buy the portable panels, plug it in right there, it'll trickle charge your battery. You have diamond etch plating coming up the front, helping to protect the front end from rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. And the three-quarter front cap with the faux windshield here. Uh, that's great because it gives you the look of the windshield without the chance of it leaking. Of course, it doesn't let in the natural light that an actual windshield does. But, you know, that's kind of a trade-off that uh, I personally would take. I guess, again, it all depends on the person. Coming around to the side, fully laminated side walls here. When we open up the pass-through, you will see that this one has a covered hinge, so you don't have a bunch of water coming down your door. It also has a magnetic catch, just like that, so that way as the kids come and they, you know, throw this down, it's not like a plastic clip or anything that's going to break off. You don't have to worry about it, which is great. Inside here, there is another motion sensor light. I don't currently have that on, but you can see you do have pretty good space here for the pass-through. You'll also notice right over to the side, you have two controls. Those controls are for your power stabilizer jacks. You'll see those right down there. One control will operate the front two, the other control will operate the rear two. Now this was kind of a mid 2020 model year, like a fall 2020 model year change. So not necessarily all 2020s will have those. The great thing about it though, is if you see that it has the power stabilizer jacks, they also change the roof on the Passport so that it will have a fully walkable roof as well. For me, that is a huge deal because you're going to want to get up there, you're going to want to do maintenance, you're going to want to check it out. Being able to walk on the roof is a big bonus. Making our way back a little bit further, you will see the power awning. It does cover both entrances, which is great. Touch a button to roll it out, same thing, never go right back in with an LED light strip. A couple outside speakers there, which are tied to that multimedia center inside, but again, it is Bluetooth capable. Your primary entrance has the Moride Step Above Step System, which is wonderful. It's a very solid step system, as you can see. You have the aluminum treads, which aren't going to rust on you, the grip tape on there, and the foldable grab handle, so you have some added control when entering or exiting the RV. Making our way back a little further, you'll see the aluminum alloy wheels, which again aren't going to rust, plus it uses load equalization axles, which is essentially a spread axle system which helps reduce sway when you're going down the road because it's a wider wheelbase. So that way you'll get better towability out of it. Also underneath, you don't really see it, but this one does have a huck bolt frame and a fully enclosed, insulated and heated underbelly. And here we'll open this guy up. This is the outside kitchen. Again, same deal. It has your magnetic catch. If you take a look, you see storage up top. You have a little cooktop here. Just pull that guy out, open it up. You'll see the two burners. Of course, that hooks up to your quick connect underneath. You'll also see right there a refrigerator, so it gives you a spot to put beverages, condiments, whatever else you need. This one does have outside TV hookup. It utilizes the key TV system, which is fantastic. Probably one of the easiest systems uh, for TV in the industry. You'll see your electrical outlet there, and it shows you exactly where to mount that TV. 
Just bear in mind, you'll kind of want to position it. You want to make sure that it's not too big where it's going to overlap this door or it's going to uh, contend with the outside kitchen. So you got to make sure, you know, you kind of pull it out, maybe shift it over to the side, something like that. Just play with it a little bit. You also see a spray port. This is your outside water access for your outside kitchen there. Basically, it just has a blue hose. Hook it up right there. It's only cold water, but it does give you the access. And right next to that is a black tank flush to make it nice and easy to wash out your black tank instead of having to stick a hose down the toilet to do so. Your secondary entrance just has your standard fold out steps. The main reason manufacturers do this because you're not using this entrance as often and it saves a little bit of money so they can get you this product at a lower price point. Coming around to the back, you'll see the square tubular bumper with the end caps, which gives you a convenient spot to store your sewer hose. It also gives you a great spot to mount your tire, making it very easy to access. It has the cover there to keep it in nice shape. You'll see your key TV multi-source controller back here. Basically, it's just a lot of jargon for this is where you plug in your cable and satellite and it feeds to the rest of the RV. The door, as I mentioned, look how big this door is. This is awesome for that storage. Flip this up. Can make, it makes it nice and easy to put in some of those larger items back there. And if you take a look up top, you will see backup camera prep. So if you want a backup camera, uh, having the prep makes it a lot easier to install, meaning it'll save you money on labor. Coming around to the side, outside shower here with both hot and cold water access. Dropping down below, you will see the termination as well as your black and gray tank valves. And again, those are insulated. And then as we make our way all the way up to the front, a couple more things. Right in front of the slide is that 30 amp detachable power cord. You'll plug that in right there. And both of your water hookups, your city water inlet, and your fresh tank fill. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is a 2020 Keystone Passport 2950BH. If you're interested in this bunk model and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also, in the comment section, let me know what you think they nailed, what you think they missed, what could be improved upon, or what you would do to change it. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.